What's up? Welcome back. This is Naptime Builder, and I am Jacob. This is a Frankenstein Jeep, and we're still doing wiring, okay? We have all that glorious mess up under there. Uh, last video, we got all the rear, all the rear, all the headlights, like 99% under the hood wired up. We did not put it all in its permanent home because after we finish under the dash and everything, of course, we're gonna test it and make sure it works all right before I wrap up and tuck away all the very important wires. <clears throat> My horn did come in, but I'm still waiting on that coil. And then, which it ought to be here tomorrow. But I guess we're starting into that under there. And I have a whole pile of mess over here. Gauges, what is that? Antenna, radio, a little bit of everything. Uh, let's get some of this over the Jeep and I guess get started. So here I am, my big old tail wadded up in here. And, uh, you know, the thing you don't want to do <clears throat> is when you save the dash and everything for last, and then you get up in here and you start finding wires like, what does it say? Where are you at now? left tail park and then it comes down then it splits and goes left tail and right tail park and with a left back up and it goes down and splits into left and right back up see when i was wiring up the rear because i started on the rear I was so confident that I had all the wires split up into groups like I needed. Obviously I didn't. And I got to them and I was like, man, last time I did this, I had a left and a right because them come down and split up like them right there, just like I just showed you them two did. Yeah. I was like, oh, them, them come down and split up last time, blah, blah, blah. Oh, they must have got in a hurry and, you know, they must have got in a hurry and didn't split those up like they're supposed to be. No, no. I got in a hurry. I got in a hurry. And didn't split those up the way they're supposed to be. So, I guess we'll stick those to the side. And after we get all the rest of this mess wired up, I'll be fishing them wires towards the rear. If I have to. And bringing them other wires back because they obviously don't go there. So take your time, take your time. You know, and that's why I put that little uh, picture up there for the warning. Cause I ain't trying to tell you how to do something. I'm just your uh, comedic guide because I mess up a lot. Six hours later. Hey, what's up? Just uh, doing a little check-in here. As you can see, I got my gauges and my little radio mounted. I've got most of the wires. Look at all that monstrosity there. I've got most of the wires hooked up for the gauges. Uh, these gauges have alarms for like low pressure, stuff like that. I'm not hooking those up. Cause I'll be looking at the gauges. I don't really want it alarming at me. So I've got two or three more wires to hook up. And then I got my grounds wired up. I just gotta connect them to the to their ground spot. And then 
then I guess after this, we'll probably try to hook up a switch. And well, we can see if we can turn the key and get a little bit of power. Up. All right, here we are. Got the old blinker here mounted up. All that's wired up except for these two wires. I gotta run another wire or two to my light switch here. This is the mess that I kind of screwed up. But since I have the other ends hooked up to the lights already, I'm wondering if, I don't know. There's not a whole lot left though, but I've been staring at all these wires for the last three hours. It's like 7.30. I've been out here since like 4.30 this morning. And oh, I'm about to have to go get some kiddos up to uh, do some homeschooling. So I guess we will uh, catch y'all at nap time. All right, so I lied. I ain't went in yet, okay? But uh, I made some progress in the last few minutes. And I'm a little excited. So here you go. You can look at it too. I'm sorry, I got the lights off in here. That way we can, uh, I'll turn that daggum light off. And I got the lights off in here so we can see. Look, my GPS is searching there. We got voltage. Obviously fuel tank is not in with the thing, so that ain't gonna do nothing in the mother to me either. Radio's got power. Where's my switch at down here? And some front parking lights. Uh oh. I got that backup wire wrong. I was wondering about that. I just now hooked it up on a whim, so we'll just unhook it here in just a second. It'll be all right. And then headlights are working. Where's my dimmer switch? That's awesome. I wonder if. All right, we got some lights going on. Like I said, I got to undo this, uh, the backup wire. I ran it to the wrong power. But uh, a lot of other things are getting power right now, so hey, it's, she's, pro she's looking a little promising. And look at this. You know, or well, listen to this, I guess, I'd say. She wants to run, but uh, we are still missing that coal. So she ain't got no spark right now. And obviously fuel, the tank ain't even hooked up. But uh, major progress this morning, so that's, that's pretty awesome. We now, now, we'll catch y'all that time. What's up? It's uh okay. Look, it's the next morning at like four thirty, and I was gonna come out here stay at nap time, but you know, Daddy decided to take a nap too. Okay, <clears throat> so we're back at it and see what we can get done. I've got two or three more wires. Okay, maybe four or five more wires up under the dash to, uh, for like the lighting and the gauges and a couple more things. If we can get all that hooked up, then we'll st we can start seeing about uh, throwing the speakers in. Hopefully I can get all this done because later on today we got a, 
UPS package coming. It's got my coil and seat belts and oh my my boat my boat fuel uh level sender or whatever. Was there something else? I don't know. Anyways, <clears throat> package come today. It supposedly has the stuff that I need. Hopefully she all works. But uh so until then, we need to get all that wrapped up. So let's see what we can do. All right, so quick little update. I got my switch mounted, my headlights switch mounted. Uh, working on a little, little horn button there. I will have to do a little touch up at some point. Get a little crazy with the drill bits there. But, uh, Everything seems to be working okay. I do have brake lights and everything now. I've got the battery unhooked while I was hooking this up. But uh, brake lights are working. Uh, what was it? There was something not working. Oh, for some reason my blinker's not working. But I have this old girl hooked up right. Pretty sure. You know, I think so. So... All right, taking a break from the uh, back at lights. That's starting to stress me out. I had them working, then they stopped working when I made the connection. I don't know, okay? So right here, I'm working on uh, putting in the speakers now. I just got one mounted up. I'm about to run some wires over to the other side to hook to the other one and all that nonsense. Uh, these are a little cheesy. They got the lights in them or whatever. That ain't necessarily what I wanted, and I don't have to run them, but you know I got them, so. Who knows, I might end up liking it. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But here's what she's looking like. Nothing's all mounted in. I got the speaker wires hooked in the back of it, about to run them across. I've got to find me somewhere up under there to actually uh, hold my wires up. And this is actually the... Uh, little wire and harness or whatever for the speakers i mean the uh, my bad the lights on the speakers so apparently this end hooks in this speaker it runs across then that little connector ties into the other speaker on the other side and then there's a a ground and a power wire for the speaker or for the lights that's a little LED controller or whatever. So, and then there's a, a small remote back there that I'll probably lose like two days into driving, if I even have it that long. All right, we're back. Now this is a few days later. I was uh, waiting on parts for the church truck, so we had to jump over to it <clears throat> and work on it. And Well, if you've seen the last church truck video, then you know how that went. If not, go check that out, because it kicked my butt. Uh, anyways, parts also came in for the Jeep. And where's that? Over here. Over here, over here. The coil came in. And, oh yeah, my little boat. <laughs> my little boat fuel sender. Okay, man, we're going to rig up a piece for that. Oh, anything else I was waiting on on that? I think that was it. But, uh, you know, I showed y'all pulling the, uh, how whoever owned it before had the old one rigged up and there was no wires or anything. So obviously that was a good reason why it wasn't working. But uh, my gauges are technically boat gauges, but they look good. I like them, it's whatever. Uh, this is a boat fuel sender. I kind of needed to get this because of the ohm reading of the gauges. Hopefully I chose right, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I will hook this up and make sure it works before I have to uh, redneck engineer 
a little plate for the top of the gas tank <laughs> like the previous owner did. So uh, I'll hook that up, see if I can get that thing working or make sure it works before going through the trouble of making my little plate for the top and all that. All right, so here she is. You know, just a little simple. Apparently the brown wire is the one that goes to my gauge and the blue is negative. So I've got a pink wire down here underneath that goes, that's for my gauge. That I need to hook that up to and then rig up the ground where we can test this thing out. You know, if I can get everything out of my way. All right, y'all, for testing purposes, and I got some witnesses. Let's make sure this thing works before I do all this work to try to get this thing in there, in the tank, okay? Yes. All right, so, got my wires connected, pink wire. I used the pink wire to go back down to the pink wire. That is the signal. They're just twisted together just for testing purposes. I got this greenish blue wire hooked to my blue wire, which is a ground. And I'm gonna touch this to my screw there, holding my VIN plate on. And there's my gauge. I'm gonna set y'all up so y'all can watch it. And holler. Holler if she works. Now remember, holler if she works, holler if she don't work. All right. She's touching the ground. And it should say empty. And then we're gonna slowly pull her up. Oh yeah, she's moving. She's a moving. It should be about half, around about. On up, on up, on up. And there's full. All the way back down. Slow up if I can. No, oh, yes, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, y'all witnessed it. It worked. Now to uh, go make me a little plate and everything for my, mm, excuse me, for my thing to, my cinder to mount in. And to start off with, we will be looking at the plate that they had on it to begin with. And we'll just like basically trace the size of it since I have it. Yeah, little thing here. This is that old one they had screwed up in there. But uh, I'm gonna grab a little bit of metal. I'm gonna trace this onto it. But before I cut it out, I need to measure how big my hole needs to be that my weight can fit through. I just need one big enough where I can get it through. But then I'm good after that. That metal right there will be thick enough for that. But, uh, that is the plan. All right, y'all, before I show you this, I don't, I don't need no hate, okay? I did what I had to do, but, you know, she's on my plate. She ain't perfect. Oh, that's just fuzz off my nap and, or my paper towels where I was wiping it off. But, uh, <clears throat> made a little plate. She ain't perfect. Finally got a hole the right size in her. She fed, obviously. And yes, she got self tappers. Okay. But I mean, she looks to be sealed up pretty good. So I did drop it a minute ago. <laughs> I did drop it a minute ago. So I'm gonna hook it back up and test it again to make sure she's still working right. So, you know, cross your fingers. All right, good news, it still works. And now I need to go clean out a gas tank real quick, so. I don't know, I'll say real quick, it probably needs to air dry overnight after the fact. Let me go see how nasty she is first, okay? Got a little purple power I poured down in there. She's crusty looking. 
as you can see. Yeah. It's not terrible, but I just figured I'd give her a good cleaning before I threw her back in. All right, here she is, all nice and clean. Well, you know, cleaner than she was. Inside looks a million times better, though. Look at there. But I'm glad I cleaned it out because I got an issue. I got a pinhole right there on the bottom. And two little bee spots there. Looks like I might have to weld up a gas tank. Super glad I cleaned that out because I would have never seen that otherwise. My goodness, that's ridiculous. All right, I guess that's the next step then. All right, y'all. So I ain't no master mechanic. I ain't no welder. None of that. I drive heavy equipment for a living. And there's probably a reason because I ain't that good at this stuff. But uh, anyways... It was just two little tiny, small, small pinholes. Broke the little uh, welder out. Got them welded up. And I was like, you know, I feel like it needs just a, just, just a touch more. Well, my just a touch was a little too big of a touch, I guess. And then I burned a bigger hole in it than was in it to begin with. So then I had to collect myself for a moment and then I went back to welding and filling in the hole that I created and it looks worse now than it did after I welded it the first time and felt like it needed a little bit more but she's good okay I'm just having one of those weeks Yesterday was Monday. I had a rough time on church truck. Rough time. Go watch that video. Uh, today's Tuesday. Feels like another Monday at times. You know what I'm saying? But here's what she's looking like. And yes, that looks horrible. But guess what? There's no holes. There's definitely no light coming through. Pretty sure there's no fluid going to go through either. So I guess now we can try to put this thing halfway back together. I don't know if I got time to put her all the way back together or not today. I gotta work tonight, so. All right, well, here we go. Look, it ain't like perfect or nothing, but she look a heck of a lot better than it did when I pulled her out, okay? All right, y'all, well, I got her up under there. I was trying to lift it up in place and get my uh, filler neck connected and everything. It's a it's a tight, tight area. Uh, and I was getting frustrated and all that and blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm running out of time. I got like five minutes till my alarm goes off for me to go in and get ready and eat a bite before work. But I just laid me a little lawnmower scissor jack thing up under there. I'm going to tomorrow and we'll use that to hold the gas tank up while I'm trying to actually use both my hands to uh, get that filler neck connected and get the thing up in place. So We'll catch y'all tomorrow. Hey, we got some progress today, okay? Alright, y'all. <clears throat> I just want y'all to know after I had a one in the house thinking about what I've been doing on the Jeep today. And I was oh, that's proud of myself. Got that deck um, uh, fuel sender in there and all, or well, yeah, that's the funny part. It's not a fuel sender. It's just a fuel level indicator. And for some reason, that never registered to me. Even after looking at it mounted in the deck tank there. I'm a little disappointed some of y'all didn't stop me. So, see, uh, all there is coming out of that is two wires of hot in the ground to tell me what level the tank's at. There ain't nothing coming out of that that's going to send any fuel from the tank to my dark gum engine. So, uh, I mean, so I 
I basically just turned my gas tank into a storage cell for fuel instead of a tank I can actually use any gas out of. So we gotta figure something out. I'm gonna rig something else up, I'm sure. Lord have mercy. All right, so here we are. It's been a few days on the old Jeep here. <clears throat> We had to jump over to something else, but my last little clip there, I was on my way to work, on my way to work, and, uh, you know, had a little realization that this ain't gonna work. You know, this right here ain't gonna work. Obviously, right here, we got where you put the fuel in. Back there is just a little vent. Right here, you know, I rigged up and made that look better than what was in there, but uh, that is our fuel level. Thermodoger. But as you can see, there were no longer anywhere for the fuel to come out and go to the motor. You know, like that. There's, there's not one of those. So, seeing how we're not using all this contraption right here, I'm probably just gonna cut this off. That way it's nothing but the tube filter and comes up to the spouter thing. I really hate that I had to do this, but, you know. As long as it works, I mean, I hope to never have to pull this tank again, you know? <laughs> so we will see. All right, y'all, here we are. She's mounted in. That little one and a half inch hole saw was like perfect size without being too, too big and crazy. <clears throat> so we got her mounted in and all that. Look at this right here. Let's see. You see the shaft back here. All right, let me turn the light on. See it back here? See how far she is from the bottom? It's like inch and a half, two inches from the bottom of the tank here. I think it's safe to say that as long as I get gas, when she tells me that it's on empty. And I can probably ride about 30, 40, 50, 100 more miles on empty. <laughs> but uh, when she says she's empty, I still got a little while. There ain't no need to freak out. I just don't know how long. Uh, I wasn't planning on putting that there. It's the reason I got the nine inch one. Uh, if I'd have known I was going to have to put it back there, you know, if I'd have thought about it. Uh, I'd have got like the 11 inch one, and I think it would have been perfect there. But, I'm not buying another one. We'll just refill this mug when the, when the light's, you know, blinking and hollering at me for a day or two. Okay? I mean... That way you ain't got to worry about picking up much trash in the tank, you know, if you never hit the bottom of the tank. All right, here she is. I ain't proud of it, but, you know, as long as she works. <laughs> now let's see if we can uh, fit this old girl back up. Under. One eternity later. There we go. All right, y'all, uh, I got the gas tank in. This is the next day, by the way, in the morning, early. Uh, yesterday... I did get that gas tank in, up and mounted, all the hoses hooked up to it finally. That uh, filler neck was a pain in the rear because that's very short once it gets on the other side of that, and that was a, a pain. This is the original Ford Ranger hose. Honestly, it would I'd like to get a different one, but that one works. Uh, got a ground. My pink wire up here is for the the level indicator, the positive of it. That's all hooked up. So hopefully, 
she'll work, you know. You know, when we get like five gallons of gas in it because that's nowhere close to touching the bottom. Anyways, I believe that is the gonna be the end of this episode. That uh, that whole tank and fuel level and fuel sender mess, it was a bit of a headache, but we figured it out in the end. Uh, is it perfect? No. No, it's not, by no means. But, will it work? Most definitely. <laughs> so that's, that's all I'm looking for. And plus, I mean, it's the gas tank, so. Don't get up under here and pull my gas tank down. You won't have to look at it. You know, unless you're watching this video, and hopefully you watch this video. But uh, that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching that, Fun Builder. We'll catch y'all next time.